Oh, hello there, and welcome to my gratuitous selection of Marshall speakers that I have before you. I've brought these out because today I would like to share with you which Marshall speaker you should probably look into buying, depending on your scenario. I have very detailed notes about each speaker, and by detailed, I mean I am just gonna tell you my own honest impression of it. The Marshall Willen here. This is their, their fun size little, little cute boy speaker. It's basically a 10 watt speaker uh, that lasts for about 15 hours on battery power. The sound out of it is very good, though there are some reasonable competitors like the Tribit Stormbox Micro 2. And when it's on sale, it's actually pretty comparable to the other speakers. Though I will say, if you're gonna put uh, this much money down for a Marshall Willen, you might wanna consider stepping up to the Ember 10 or maybe a Bose SoundLink Flex, and you'll get a little bit more sound for not a lot more money. The reason you buy the Marshall Willen is because you love the style and you love the form factor of this speaker specifically. Otherwise, there's a lot of good other competitors out there. I give this one a seven out of 10. And here's the little Emberton 2 boy here coming in white. This is the speaker that started my obsession with Marshall speakers, more specifically the original Marshall Emberton. This is the Emberton 2, which comes in white. The only real difference between this Emberton 2 and the original is that the original Emberton couldn't stack with other speakers and it had no equalization. If you wanted to stack the Willen with the Emberton, you could actually do that, as long as it's the Emberton 2. If you have the original Emberton, you can't do that. And you can pretty much stack with uh, quite a few speakers. Overall, the sound quality out of the Emberton tends to be a little bit processed sounding, but I, I actually kind of like the sound of it. it. It somehow has like this warm sound to it that I don't feel like a lot of other speakers have. The only real competitors that I'd say you'd want to check out in comparison to this would be the JBL Flip 6 and the Bose SoundLink Flex, which is kind of the staple of these smaller speakers. It feels like you could throw this thing across the room and it would be just fine. Uh, I would give the Marshall Emberton an eight out of 10 in the lineup of Marshall speakers. Next up, we have the Marshall Middleton here. Now the Middleton is basically a monster Emberton 2, all that it really offers is a little bit more volume and the ability to just face and treble on the speaker itself. It has the same toggle switch as the rest of them and it's just a little bit bigger. Oh, no liquid baby boys. In terms of sound quality, the Middleton, I actually don't really like that much. I think it tends to sound too processed. It's a good speaker and some people might really like it, but I'd say if you're gonna spend this much money on a speaker, you might as well step up to the Marshall Kilburn too. That just has a little bit better sound. The only reason you'd be getting the Middleton is if you really want something with IP67 rating in this bigger form factor. It is a beautiful speaker. If you want bigger sound, you might as well start stepping up. So it's kind of that unhappy middle ground. I give this about a, a five out of 10. The Marshall Tufton. This bad boy, gosh, when I bought this thing, I was like terrified that I spent way too much money for not a great speaker. But it turns out the Tufton is actually a pretty good solid performer. I compare this to the Ultimate Ears Hyperboom. I'd say the Hyperboom's a little bit louder sounding. Maybe just the sound is like a little bit better on the Hyperboom, maybe. The, the Tufton has is like a really smooth, chocolatey bass. I know those words don't make any sense, but that's what I feel about this speaker. I've really enjoyed listening to music on it, and Marshall has yet to deliver a bigger portable speaker that has such a nice bass and sound to it. I highly prefer this over the Marshall Kilburn. I'd say if you're trying to figure out which one to buy, the Tufton is definitely a much better sounding speaker. It's not that much bigger than the Kilburn. You could kind of think it like as a Marshall Stanmore, just with a vertical orientation instead. I give this a nine out of 10 on the Marshall scale. Worth the money when it's on sale. And I'm wondering if Marshall's gonna release like a Marshall Tufton 2 or something that might be better than this. But what I have noticed in general with Marshall is when they upgrade speakers, sometimes they get a little more process sounding and not as good. And now for the Marshall Acton 3. This is actually one of my favorite speakers from Marshall that's come out recently. The original Marshall Acton, I've owned two of them. I absolutely love that speaker. When they went to the Marshall Acton 2, I actually didn't really like it as much. I thought the sound was kind of muddy and gross. The Marshall Acton 3 has an absolutely beautiful sound and you can not only equalize it here, but it has special equalization settings to provide better sound if you're like sitting it in a corner or on a table. If you have the chance to buy this or the Acton 2, I definitely say it's worth the money to just step up to the Acton 3. It's like a whole new speaker. They're not even comparable. One of the things I really like about the 3 series that they upgraded here 
It has a metal toggle switch, but it also has a fast forward, rewind and play button, and then your manual adjustment knobs. Um, these all come with Bluetooth 5.1 or 5.2. So eventually in the future, these should be able to stereo pair, but we are beholden to Bluetooth technology and how many devices are going to adapt the new LDAC um, audio and new ways of pairing things. So TBD on whether this will stereo pair in the future kind of sucks right now, but this I give a 10 out of 10 for value from the Marshall lineup. This is actually one of my genuinely favorite speakers and it's at a price range. I think that's a little bit more approachable for most people. If you don't feel like ponying up that much money for this speaker, something that's comparable would probably be the Klipsch, the 1-2 series. That is a phenomenal speaker. I've got it right behind me here on the desk. That thing sounds amazing and it's usually quite a bit cheaper than this one. And now for the Stanmore 3. This speaker is a phenomenal speaker. It's kind of like that, that middle option between the Acton and the Woburn. Here's the Marshall Acton on top here. Quite, it gets quite a bit louder. I wouldn't say the quality of the sound is that much better. It's definitely a little more bassy. I would say the Sandmore 3 is worth stepping up to if you just need a little more oomph than the Acton, but you don't quite want to pony up the money for the Woburn. Sometimes this little rectangular shape just looks really good in your house if you can squeeze it into like a bookshelf or something like that, whereas like the Woburn might be too much. If you were had to buy this or the Acton 2 or the Stanmore 2, I'd definitely say it's worth stepping up to the Stanmore 3. The sound is gonna blow you out of the water compared to the two series. It's just, they're not even comparable. Nine out of 10 for the Marshall lineup. Ugh, this is the heavy one. This is the Woburn 3. This is the big Papa Mamba Jamba of all the Marshall speakers. I've owned the Marshall Woburn 1 and the Marshall Ober Woburn 2. I've had all of them. The third iteration, I would say overall is the best. The 1 series, I'd say actually maybe sounds just a hair better because the 3 is delivering you all of the extra features that you're getting in an updated speaker like the, uh, the equalization for corners and placement plus the potential for stereo pairing in the future, I think this is the one to go for. But God, is it expensive. It is a really expensive speaker, and for that I apologize. Right now you're gonna see the Woburn 2s on sale because they're trying to get rid of that stuff. Um, I would say don't bother with the Woburn 2. To me, it sounds a lot muddier. I think the Woburn 3 is a much better buy. I also like the thinner brass band down here. I just think it looks better personally. This is the no compromise speaker. Also something really weird about the Woburn 3 that not every other speaker has, even the Woburn 2 doesn't, is it actually has an HDMI input. So you can hook it up to your TV if you wanna listen through this. Now, I don't normally ever recommend that. I'd recommend just going with the soundbar, but you can do it with the Woburn 3 if you're crazy. And it does tend to sound pretty good. I would say the Marshall Woburn 3 though is the definitive Marshall speaker. Like. It's literally the only one approaching the size of a normal Marshall amp from the actual Marshall's company and not the, you know, this stuff. It has bass for days. The sound is incredibly clear. I love vocals on it. This is the 11 out of 10 for me in the Marshall speakers. The only reason I'd see you maybe not stepping up to this is if you just literally don't have the size for it. If you were gonna have to play this against the Stanmore, I'd say there's not a huge difference at normal listening volumes. Like they're both gonna deliver pretty much the same experience. Uh, only step up to the Woburn if you've got the space for it and you really, money is no object. Stanmore might save you a couple hundred bucks if you're just gonna be listening at normal volumes all the time. Or stepping down to that Acton if you just want like a bedroom speaker. There's a few speakers I actually don't have anymore. Uh, the Acton 2, the Stanmore 2, I just didn't like them. The sound was muddy, they didn't impress me much. The Marshall Woburn 2 was a little bit better, so I have that one still. But also, the uh, Stockwell 2 and the Kilburn 2, I just don't really like them. They didn't really make sense in my lineup. The reason I didn't like the Stockwell 2 is because it just never got loud enough. I did love the form factor of it and I've checked it out, but just eh. And then the Kilburn 2 tended to sound a little bit boxier to me, whereas the Tufton, when you step up to that, sounds a little bit better. So that's the reason I don't have those speakers. And honestly, if they're on sale, it's worth considering, but I would recommend stepping up to the other speakers I have in this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you appreciated this video, I just appreciate you watching to the end, quite honestly, but also there are affiliate links below and if you click those, I make a small commission. If you want to, you can. If not, just leave a comment and say hello. Thanks for watching. Okay, enjoy your shopping. Goodbye.